What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be talking about the practical side of shooting focus stacks or stacking images, focus bracketing, it depends, all the camera companies now have their own term for it, uh, at least those that implement an automatic mated process in camera. And so this is the continuation of my tip 15 for the EOS R5, where I talked about the menus and settings for focus bracketing. In this, we're going to talk about sort of the practical aspects of shooting a focus bracket. I won't be getting into the processing aspect of shooting a focus bracket, though. So to me, one of the great things about digital photography in general is the ability that it opens to using uh, computational techniques to basically do things you just couldn't do or just couldn't do easily or just couldn't do without an expensive specialized tool simply by throwing some computer time at it. And focus bracketing is definitely one of those areas. Now, when it comes to focus bracketing, in my experience, there's two broad use cases for it. So one of those is in shooting landscape or architectural photography, where you want everything in the frame to be in focus from something very close to the camera to all the way out to infinity. The other aspect of focus stacking or focus bracketing is for macro and close-up photography, which broadly speaking, are just two sides of the same coin uh, with a little bit different, perhaps, consideration where you simply cannot get enough depth of field stopping down. So in the case of macro photography, generally speaking, the problem that you run into is you simply, even at f16 or f22, you simply cannot get enough depth of field to get everything in focus. And so focus stacking gives you the ability to shoot and combine multiple images to get your entire subject matter in focus. The flip side of that coin is, for me at least, shooting what I would call close-up photography. So product photography, um, model cars, planes, trains, that kind of thing, where you're not so close, it's not so macro that you couldn't stop down to say f16 and get everything in focus. However, at the same time, doing that will generally would generally tend to result in a very busy or very distracting background. So where the macro side of things, you may be shooting at f16 and still having to stack to get enough depth of field and everything in focus and your background is probably not going to be that distracting for the close-up side of things you're talking about maybe shooting at f 2.8 or 4 and stacking to get your subject in focus while maintaining a cleaner background now the next problem that you run into when you start looking at focus bracketing is the question especially the automated focus bracketing uh, this is the question of how many frames do you actually need to take? Now, it would have been great if Canon and Nikon and anybody else or everybody else who's implementing this implemented it in a way where you could focus on the closest thing you wanted in focus, you could focus on the furthest thing you wanted in focus, and the camera would calculate how many images at whatever step size you specify it would actually need to take to get that into effect. And obviously for infinity, you either focus at infinity or just tell the camera infinity. Uh, unfortunately, that's not how anybody has implemented focus bracketing or focus stacking in their cameras. As far as, at least as far as Canon and Nikon go, the way that they have implemented it is that you focus on the closest thing or closest place you want focus to be started at, and the camera will shift the focus and take pictures towards infinity until it reaches basically uh, one of two conditions. So the two conditions are the lens has been focused to infinity or the stack uh, the number of frames that you've told the camera to take is uh, exceeded or reached. Uh, so 
in that landscape situation, you know, say you're shooting a, you know, with a wide angle lens and you've got a flower and you want everything from the flower all the way out to the mountains in the background to be in sharp focus, you're going to focus on the flower, tell the camera to start going, and quite honestly, you can let the camera run to infinity, which makes the problem of, well, how many images do you actually need actually not that difficult to solve. You just pun punch in a number that's probably in the 50 to 60 range and you will unless you are shooting extremely close up for your flower you will have uh more probably more than enough images especially if you're shooting like i said with a widish angle lens 50 millimeters or wider and you're shooting at a middling aperture say around f8 uh, plus or minus a bit uh, so my experience has been generally every time i've looked at long uh, or landscape type stuff i come up with uh you need about 25 or 30 exposures but because the camera will stop when it gets to infinity you can over you can set the number of images higher than you need and the camera will just shoot what it needs and stop at least that's the case for the canon for the r5 and the r6 the tricky more tricky situation is when you're shooting something that's a close-up phot uh, photography situation. So you're shooting the uh, a product or something like that, and you need a certain number of images to cover the depth of the product. Now you can go a bit further than that, obviously, because you know it, having a few extra images isn't going to be uh, uh, the end of the world. But you obviously don't want to shoot sort of all the way out to infinity and say maybe have to shoot... 100 or 150 images of which you might need 20 or 30 the you know the first 20 or 30 so that brings us to the problem of figuring out how many images you need now the as i said if you're doing landscapes the good news is is just set it to like say 50 and uh you know you'll probably be good on that but i mean you could even set it higher than that and you'll just you know not have a problem for shooting a close-up subject it's a little bit more tricky and there's no simple formula for this the, the way i solved it is i've written a tool i will put a link in the description below it's a uh, focus stack number of exposures calculator essentially and i'm iterating through depth of fields to calculate uh, or iterating through a basically calculating depth of field, moving the focus, calculating depth of field, moving the focus, etc., to figure out where or how many, approximately how many exposures. Now, I have the tool that I'm using is, we'll call it in beta. It's not a, uh, I'm, I'm still fully testing it. It's not fully developed. Uh, in from my experience, it tends to overestimate somewhat uh, how many exposures you actually will need. Um, now that's not necessarily a bad thing, as I said, because you can overshooting by a few images and having a few too many images is less of a, a, a problem than overshooting by, you know, or not overshooting at all, I should say. So let me swing the camera around get the things get some stuff set up and i will show you the process that i go through using my tool to figure out uh, or to shoot a focus bracketing stack all right so what we have here is just an n scale model train engine it, it, an example of sort of anything for product photography or whatever and we're doing this in that sort of close-up use case so that close-up case where it's uh not macro obviously and it's still something that we need to have or want to have a clean-ish background for so sort of just to show the situation we'll start off here um taking a shot and we're gonna just focus i don't know like right there is probably good uh focus on the now now obviously at f 2.8 and at this distance if I focus on the numbers on the cab, the, the front of the engine's out of focus, the back of the engine's out of focus, and the background is reasonably well blurred. So, you know, if we take a look at that, uh, whites are a little overexposed, but, you know, we're demonstrating purposes and we're not trying to get the most accurate everything in the world. Now, we can also look at, if we stop down to, oh, let's just say F16, 
most of the train, in fact, if I focus a little bit further back, most of the train is in focus if I stop down. And if we shoot another image, obviously the problem here is that everything in the background is now super sharp. You can see the levels on my F6 back there. You can see my card reader, my monitor stand, etc. Not the greatest obvious situation. Now, I mean, obviously, if you're going to do this as product photography, you're, you're going to have a clean background. So this is a little bit off script for that. However, like I said, going back to if we're shooting at a uh, if we're shooting at a wide aperture we get a much cleaner background now the question is well okay i said i have an app how do we use this let's put this into practice so the first thing we need to do the first thing that we need to do is figure out where the front of the thing that we're trying to focus on so for that i have a tape measure and I'm going to just measure out, and it is approximately 13 inches away from the, from the front of the camera, or from the, the, frame, the frame mark on the camera to the front of the engine. So we're going to go with 13 inches, inches there. And if I go the other way, the back that I want to get in focus is about 16 inches behind the camera. So if I fire up the app that I have on my phone, which I'll put a better thing in here and start filling in some information. So I'm shooting at about uh, 65 millimeters is approximately correct. And I'm going to be shooting at f2.8. I'm not using a crop factor. I'm not using the default focus step before. And I'm going to set the first thing to, what did I say? 16 inches, 13 inches, um, 13 inches. So I'm going to set the first distance to 13 inches. I'm going to set the ending distance to 16 inches. And I'm going to hit update. And it, it's saying that I should shoot about 37 exposures. So if we jump into the menu and I have focus bracketing on my My Menu page and we do enable and we say 37 and we hit OK. Focus increments for I'm not going to worry about exposure smoothing. Now, I am focused on the very front of the engine that I want to shoot and I will just hit the go button essentially click close the shutter release and let the camera fire now you'll notice that of course the camera overshot the back of the train somewhat slightly the, the it's quite clear looking at say the dust there on the desk that i overshot the rear so probably didn't need 37 images could have probably gotten away with 35 or something like that but as i said it's easier to overshoot than it is to uh undershoot and not have the war images after the fact so that's it that's the process essentially for shooting a, uh, or at least that i follow for shooting a focus bracket using the uh, tools the automation that's available on my camera an eos r5 now as i said at the beginning of this video there are a couple of caveats one is you definitely want to make sure you've, you've at least overshot slightly because it's easier to throw away images that you don't need than it is to not have images that you do need uh, second of all I would say that this is not necessarily a 100% reliable method. Uh, just I've had issues in Photoshop where it just doesn't figure out where something in focus should be. Now, because of the way focus does or Photoshop does focus stacking or image blending, it is fixable if you want to spend the time to go through your stack and find the right image and uh, change the layer masks manually you can get a, a workable, you know, it is something that's workable or that you can address if you have to, at least in some cases. Um, but obviously not having to do that is going to be preferable. As you saw with this, I tended to keep the setup, I tended to keep things quite simplistic around the model that I shot, largely because it helps deal uh, the, with the stacking process. It helps deal with the fact that it's not 100% uh, maybe behaves the way you would necessarily think. Because remember, there is no distance map or something like that for what is and isn't in focus. 
Although I think possibly with dual pixel AF, that could be something that is actually done. It's just not being done or used that way. Uh, so the post-processing software is looking at the sharpness of details in the frame and including them or not including them based on sharpness and not necessarily an understanding of depth or distance or what's actually happening. So if you found this video useful or at least a little bit informative, please consider smashing that like button. As always, please consider subscribing. Oh, and as always, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.